Have you done that before somewhere? <laughs> Good evening to you at home. Look, tonight I want to introduce you to the Thunderbirds. And if you don't know who or what they are, there are a lot of people here tonight who will very quickly fill you in. Now, the Thunderbirds was one of the very early television science fiction shows. It went to air back in the 1960s. And the remarkable thing about it is that there were only 32 episodes ever made. But they've been repeated almost continuously ever since. So now, what, more than 25 years later, there's a whole army of dedicated Thunderbirds fans all over the world in more than 60 countries now, and they tune in religiously every week for yet another repeat of one of the Thunderbirds adventures. And what's even more remarkable about this is that the, the Thunderbird characters are just very basic animated wooden puppets. Four... <laughs> Thunderbirds are go. go. <laughs> Calling International Rescue. Calling International Rescue. This is Carlville Hospital. Calling International Rescue. Loud and clear, Carlville. <laughs> go ahead. The trial flight of the rocket was a complete success. All fine. The operation will proceed on Christmas Day as planned. Thanks, Carlville. What will be the rocket's ETA? All 900 hours. Right. We'll be ready at all 915 to pick up the lucky winner. Thank you, International Rescue. Over and out. <laughs> well, you get the general idea. It's all pretty simple stuff. But never mind. The Thunderbirds have been elevated to cult status, so none of that matters. There have been two feature films made as spin-offs from the television series. And uh, five years ago, two young English actors, Gavin Robertson and um, um, Andrew Dawson... <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's the one with the glasses. Uh, ...devised a very clever theatre show based on the original characters. And they've been running with that almost continuously ever since. Uh, the show broke all kinds of records in the West End, in London, when it played there. And they've been packing the fans in in uh, all kinds of unlikely places during their Australian tour. But whatever you do, don't think this is unique, because it's not. As I think you'll discover tonight, fantasy and science fiction fans are part of a whole subculture. There are a lot of them and they take themselves very seriously. There's a major science fiction convention, well, some of them do. <laughs> There's a major science fiction convention somewhere in the world every week. And just to give you an idea of um, some of the groups that are here tonight, uh, the Doctor Who fans. Where are the Doctor Who fans? Right. Uh, the Star Trek fans. Star Trek. <laughs> um, who else do we have here? We have Rocky Horror fans. <laughs> What about the superheroes? Battalion, the Hooray! Batman fan club. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Gla Galaxy. Right. Well, OK, thank you for coming. Well, um, Gavin and Andrew, with all that rich vein to draw on, why did you choose the Thunderbirds as the source for your show? Well, it's just something that we remembered um, from our youth, really. I mean, we grew up in the, at the time when um, us and I guess everyone here is of a kind of broad uh, spectrum of the same age and uh, we, we just remember watching it on TV and we wanted to uh, start a theatre company and work together mm. and uh, it was just uh, an idea that we got nostalgic about and I think that's part of the key is that you kind of you end up you have one of those conversations where you're going uh, oh do you remember the way with their strings oh yeah and you remember that? Oh, the palm trees do you remember that oh and you yes. remember that oh the rock you know so it's it's that whole thing we thought well if, if we've got a nostalgia for it other people must have it too but how do you how do you cover all the characters in Thunderbirds with just the two of you by running around a lot and lots of <laughs> costume and lots of Valcro on it, I think, and ripping well, 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 give us an idea, perhaps. I mean, I'm sure some of the fans here will have favourites that they'll want you to show. But what about, I mean, Lady oh, Penel Penelope, Penelope seems Penelope. to me to be the judge. How well, do you do Lady an, Penelope? It's an interesting problem, but uh, it was easily solved by asking Gavin to wear a blonde wig and a pink dress, which yes. he did without... Uh, <laughs> in fact, he does not No, I argued a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we had the whole thing. We, we do a lot of it through mime, and a lot of it's in a very, very cartoony or very crass. So you have um, uh, stuff like um, International Rescue, Lady Penelope speaking. Hi, Penny, Jeff here. We're going to have one for you. You know, so you have risk communication, and then you have, uh, they talk to each other via these things. You have Parker, you know, Juice uh, Be Lady, all those kind of characters. But a lot of, it, a lot of it's kind of done, you almost cheat it. 
you know. As yes. Over there. And we tell the story using mime, so we set up the, the, the rickety bridge and the, the baddie who blows it up using a, you know... Yeah, it's, it's like a classic. We try to make a kind of a classic episode. Yes. Uh, so not any particular more... episode, but kind of mixing them all up. So it all relies heavily on imagination. And it all relies on the fact that pretty well everyone in your audience knows Thunderbirds intimately so. and all the characters. Yeah. But not so much, there's people that... There's most of people come who have a vague memory of it. And we trigger more memories for them. Like, they don't remember the pun but when you do it, they go, oh, my God, the palm trees, you know, they fall down. Why, why, why they didn't plant them further out? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you get these, you get the, you get the movements, presumably, of these rather, they're, they're very right. stilted. Uh, yeah, like puppets, aren't they? This is Captain, Captain Scarlet. Do you remember Captain, Captain Scarlet? Scarlet? You remember Captain yeah. Scarlet? Yeah. 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 Captain Scarlet, I mean, of course, you have them. A short sighted these days. He is, yes, he's got glasses on, he's getting old. <laughs> but uh, the main problem is, of course, they've, uh, they're hinged just from the shoulders. Yes. And they just... And they're always trying to <laughs> stay off the floor. And every time they turn, they always left their head behind. <laughs> <laughs> and then the eyes go from left to right. And Captain Scarlet can never shoot straight, of course, because he always goes... <laughs> so, you know, and that's how we show the, yeah. show so the we're, puppet we're characters. Yeah, serious about it, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very serious, I can Absolutely. see that. Well, what about some of you Thunderbird fans? I mean, uh, Kerry Doherty. Um, <coughs> How, how do you, undoubtedly you've seen the show, how do you feel it measures up to the high standards that you fans have set for Thunderbirds? I don't think you actually relate it in the same way. I enjoy it as a wonderful piece of entertainment. Um, whether it's as good as Thunderbirds is irrelevant. Oh. It's a great piece of entertainment in its own right. And it is a wonderful tribute to the show. Yes. I mean, it what is. is it about Thunderbirds that, uh, that has, has uh, turned it into a, a cult? all over the world. I mean, 66 countries, isn't it? Oh, probably more. Yes. Um, I've, I've seen episodes of Thunderbirds, you know, translated into languages you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you know, obscure African dialects and all kinds of yes. things. It, it's been around and, like Doctor Who, it's been all around the world. But what is it? What is it about Thunderbirds that singled it out like this? I think there are two things. One is the, the technical brilliance of the, um, the production. Because, all right, you can laugh at the funny movements of the marionettes and so forth, but mm. the special effects work was, in its day, virtually state-of-the-art. Yes, I and suppose you have to keep remembering, up. this is something that's 25 years old that's now, right. and only 32 episodes. It was yes. made. Yeah, and so it. it's still holding up against even the much classier and much more expensive yeah, productions mm. of today. And Derek Meddings, who did uh, a lot of the special effects, and James is the guy who just finished doing the special effects on Batman. Mm. So, I mean, they've all gone on yes. to do uh, other things, Aliens and, uh, you know, all those other kind of films that we now, that in a way, have replaced that. Yes. There's another aspect of it, too, though, and I think that is the Thunderbirds has a very clear moral message. It says it is good to help people who are in trouble. That that is a, you know, a, a worthwhile thing to do. And I think people respond to that that general right. underlying message. It's not, it doesn't hit you in the face, but that is the underlying message and what people here may not realize is that in fact there is now an organization called international rescue which was inspired by this program by thunderbirds and mm. it is a british-based organization composed of um, rescue specialists who go out donate their time free just like international rescue they go out <laughs> anywhere in the world and um, assist in disasters they've been to italy armenia Columbia. Um, Columbia, yes, various yes. places. Yeah. So, I mean, surely, if nothing else, that's a worthwhile reason for yeah. international rescue right. and some birds actually, to have existed. We actually uh, created a... We did a, a benefit for them, so... Uh, for international in rescue. England, for actually, for the original. Well, some of you others, uh, from, from some of the other clubs, 